What I love to do is introduce the right people to the right people, assemble the smartest people I can think of or reach out to to carry that conversation, and that's exactly what I've done today. Please give my panel a round of applause. Welcome. Okay, guys, Jay Martin here, CEO of Cambridge House, and I'm joined right now by Kevin Drover, the CEO of Arcana Silver. Kevin, how are you? I'm great, Jay. Thanks uh, for having me on. I'm really glad to have you on. It's about time we chatted um, because I've been a shareholder for at least six months, haven't had you on the show yet. I always like talking my book and introducing stories that I'm excited about to my audience. So I do appreciate you making the time. Now, Kevin, where I thought would be an interesting place to start this conversation is, you know, I have uh, three to five guests on a week, right? And we talk about everything from macro finance to the metals market, try to get really granular. And without question, the most bullish sentiment for 2020 was surrounding silver. Um, in 2021, we began that way that the macro trends are lined up as they were. Um, there's been a bit of price volatility and investors can get quite reactive to short-term volatility like that. So let's start there. What do you do, Kevin? How do you manage your mental state? What do you focus on when you're seeing some short-term volatility that may question your conviction in the long-term trend? Well, I, I think, you know, first of all, you know, that uh, silver has got a, uh, a very good run uh, ahead of it, uh, given, uh, you know, the Paris Accords and the fact now that the United States has rejoined that and the push certainly seems to be on to uh, convert, you know, from fossil fuels and uh, lower greenhouse gases and so on. Uh, that bodes well for, for the price or and, and for the consumption of silver. There was a recent report out uh, the Indonesia International Energy Agency where, you know, not only silver metal, but many other metals, uh, copper, cobalt, uh, you know, lithium and certainly silver, are going to have quite a, uh, a spike in consumption as part of that renewable effort. And, uh, you know, from what I could read from that particular report, the silver is going to double, silver consumption is going to double, uh, you know, over the next uh, 20 years uh, kind of thing. And that bodes very well for the price. So, you know, uh, our, our position, I guess, at Orcana here is that, uh, you know, the, the silver price is in a very good upward solid trend. Uh, and on that trend, there is going to be some machinations, you know, that sine wave within the trend uh, is going to be there. And I think the, uh, the daily, weekly fluctuations uh, are very hard to chase and they're very hard on the nerves if, you, if you're going to try and chase those. Mm -hmm. But we certainly believe that, um, uh, you know, we're in a really good position. We're a low cost producer down around the $8 an ounce range. So, you know, it may drop down a little bit uh, and it certainly could uh, very well go up a bit as this thing goes. But, you know, our our, uh, our position is that uh, we believe that the wind is at our back when it comes to the silver price based on on the consumption and the, and the world that we live in uh, going forward. Right. I love that. And you don't lose sleep over the small stuff. So, you exactly. know, those consumption numbers you threw out, Kevin, are, are impressive, right? And and tough to imagine how the silver sector would meet a doubling in in demand, right? Because there aren't a lot exactly. of pure play silver mines that exist. Most of them are, you know, uh, byproducts of base metal mines, correct? So, um, so let's talk about Orcana a little bit. Great jurisdiction. You've got uh, two near-term producing mines, one in Texas, one in Colorado. We're going to focus uh, to begin in Colorado because that's your... Uh, upcoming, uh, you're closer to producing in Colorado. So why don't you catch my audience up, Kevin, on what uh, what you're working on in Colorado? Will do, sure. Uh, the Revenue Virginia's mine is in Colorado. It's a past producer. It's a very high grade mine. It's uh, over 37 ounces per ton. And it's a long life mine. Um, it's uh, just about ready to go into production. Uh, you know, we've got virtually all of our people on site right now. Uh, we're literally weeks away uh, from uh, putting it into production. We'll be starting uh, circuit testing in the mill within the next week or so. Uh, and uh, just as a matter of fact, it's only uh, in the past few days that we've intersected the main vein that we're going to mine uh, and it looks really just like we uh, uh, thought it would look like so no surprises or anything there so within uh, the next uh, couple of weeks we'll be commissioning the mill our uh, underground development is going really well we're looking at putting first ore through the mill in early july we're looking at shipping our first concentrates in early august 
Uh, and we anticipate being in full production and cash flow positive in September of this year. August, July and August will be the ramp up months uh, where we'll, you know, we'll start in July. We'll ramp up through August uh, to full production uh, in uh, September. So, uh, yeah, we're, we're, uh, we're ahead of schedule right now, slightly under budget. Uh, so things are going very, very well. Excellent. Okay. So, or in the middle of July concentrates in August, uh, full production cash flow positive in September. Talk to me about, about the production numbers, Kevin. What are we looking at? Uh, the first uh, full year of production, we're looking at about three and a half million ounces of silver. And that's at the rate, the run rate of 270 tons per day. And, and that's the feasibility rate. Now, on a go forward basis, we're looking at increasing that we have a mill capability, a nominal rating in the mill of about 550 tons a day. But as I said, we're starting up at 270. So what we want to do, get up and running at that. And that the feasibility was built at that uh, um, 270 number. But we want to settle down our costs, settle down our metallurgy, settle down our productivities. Once we get that. It's a matter of having enough development done far enough out in front of us to be able to bring another stove up. We need two stoves operating for 270 tons a day. We need another stove to take it to 400. We intend to do that in 2022, early 2022. That okay. will take from three and a half million ounces to four and a half million ounces. And then in 2023, we are looking at bringing another stove online. So we'd have four operating stoves, two in reserve, and we would go up to 500 tons a day, and that would then take us to that uh, six and a half million ounces a year. Beyond that, uh, beyond that, we're looking at Shafter. We have the Shafter project in Texas, fully permitted, 1,500 ton a day mill, a new pristine ore body available to us. Uh, we're doing some work now. Uh, we're looking at doing a small drill program this fall. We thought we would do it this spring, but it just too hot down there to, to really get good productivity. So uh, we do have some time, but we're looking at doing that October, November uh, feasibility study in the first uh, uh, three, four months of the year. Assuming positive feasibility study, we'd make a production decision and bring it online uh, in 2024, early 2025. Uh, and that would take us another two and a half to three million ounces. And that then puts us in that eight to nine million ounces within the next couple of years, makes us a mid-tier producer. So that's our strategy. That's where, you know, that's the plan uh, that we're, uh, we're heading into the future with here. But, you know, job number one for us, get ourselves into production at the Revenue Virginia's mine so we can get cash flow. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Job number one is clear. And you outlined your case to ramp up the revenue Virginia's mine in Colorado up to six, six and a half million ounces per year. Um, then the focus shifts to Texas. And you said by, did you say late 2024, early 2025? Uh, actually, we would be, uh, I, I think I missed the year there. It's, it's uh, late 2023 or early 2024. Okay. Yeah, that's what I thought. And collectively putting around eight or nine million ounces per year, entering the mid-tier uh, production club. So yeah, right behind some of our favorite stories in the sector. Now you mentioned, uh, it's a long life mine. So backing up to revenue, Virginia. So what is long life? What does long life mean, Kevin? Well, right now, if you look at our feasibility study, we've got a seven year mine life and, but we, we own multiple veins, uh, in this project. We own nine major veins. Uh, the Revenue Virginia's mine is our primary vein, and we're focused on that one alone right now. But we don't have resources on the other ones. We own 16,000 feet of strike length on the, on the Revenue Virginia's vein. And all of our resources right now and reserves are on only 4,000 feet of that. So we have considerable 12,000 feet, you know, between the north and the south sides of that vein. And our intention is that we will continue mining these veins on the various levels. When you look at that, we put mine plans to all of this. And if you look just to Virginia's vein alone, mining at the rate of all being at 270 tons a day, it's a 20 year mine life. But that's only one of nine veins. We have the Terrible Vein, we have the Klondike Vein, we have the Montana, we have the Wheel of Fortune, the Yellow Rose, uh, and uh, and others that we haven't even explored yet. So 
we believe that we're going to be in this uh, this area here for a very, very long time. Historically, uh, I mean, this this mine has already run 46 years continuously. And back in those days, it ran between 400 and 600 tons a day. So it's it's got a long history of, uh, you know, already fairly high productivity. Uh, but many of the other mines, and there's been over 3,000 in this area where we are, and many of them have already run over 100 years, 50 years, 40 years. Ida Rod on Newmont's mine, 120 years. Um, a Camp Burn mine, 100 years. Shenandoah Dives, 100 years, and so on. So we're in a really good address here where we can, uh, where you know, all the mines have been very long life. But that also gives us opportunity. There's many uh, other um, assets here that we can pick up that are, in fact, owned by uh, many uh, either local or, or you know otherwise uh, that are for sale. We're not focused on that right now. We're focused on getting ourselves going, but that is opportunity for us, uh, you know, at some point in the future. Yeah, I was going to ask about that actually. So I'm glad that you covered it, Kevin. Thanks for going there. Um, you know what, what caught my attention uh, about our can initially was production numbers, near-term producer in the silver sector, hard to find. Uh, company at your stage with your risk profile and the jurisdiction's great. You know, more and more this year, um, I found guests I've had on the show have been hyper-focused on geopolitical risk. And um, the two projects in the US, I, I like that a lot. So um, we've got a decent sense of what we can expect in terms of news flow. And the one I'll be watching is September. Um, that's, the, that's the big one, right? Getting to cash flow positive. So yeah. Sure. I'd love to have you back on in the fall and check in on the story and get you back in front of the audience and um, get an update. But thank you so much for your time, Kevin. I appreciate it. Thanks, Jay. Great to be here. As always, if you enjoy this content, please hit subscribe. I'd love to have you on the team. And if you want to take the next step and go a bit deeper with my content, I publish a free weekly newsletter every Friday where I debrief my portfolio I distill the top lessons I've uncovered from the guests I've had on this show every week. And I talk about sectors and industries that I think are poised to move, areas I'm looking for opportunity and places that I'm allocating capital. I love writing it. We publish every Friday. The link is right beneath this video. Love to have you join the tribe.